What drives you, exile? Is it justice? Revenge? Honor? No. It is power. Your limits will be tested. Break them. Do what is thought impossible, and the Atlas will follow. Path of Exile, Echoes of the Atlas is a new in-game expansion focused around bossing and area control. And to be successful in this expansion, we're going to require builds that excel in these two areas. And in the Challenge League, we're going to be locked into a small arena forced to fight wave upon wave of nasty and difficult enemies. So chances are, for this, we're going to require builds that aren't so much focused on clear speed and are more focused on being able to handle small areas of bosses or powerful enemies. My goal is to provide you all five powerful builds that will be able to handle both the expansion and the Challenge League with ease. These are going to include full path of buildings, which will be in the description, that include notes about leveling, information about the characters, multiple leveling trees, multiple gear sets, and they should have everything that you need to have a successful league start. Today, the build we're going to be talking about is a Purifying Flame Mine Saboteur. Now, this build was spawned out of necessity. When we were playing Pyroclast Mines, we were trying to figure out a way to make the build more accessible to people before the Astral Projector Ring. It being a metamorph item and it being rather rare and expensive, it wasn't realistic to expect people to be able to get it. And Purifying Flame Mines is the result. Interestingly, Purifying Flames actually has a lot of benefits over Pyroclast. The one downside from Pyroclast is that it isn't as great on single target, but everything else actually might be better. This build is capable of doing some of the most difficult content in the game like it's nothing. The clip that you're going to be seeing here is me with just some ramshackled gear that I put together. I've only got about 5k life, nothing special. It could be significantly stronger. And we're doing a tier 16 Awakener 8 Delirium Mirror with multiple scarabs, as well as fire, cold, and lightning damage taken sextants. And on top of that, this map has crit and negative max res on it. And we are absolutely steamrolling through it. Clear damage is excellent. Like I said, the single target isn't as good as Pyro Class Mines. However, the damage on single target is still quite good. It is a mind build after. So I can say pretty comfortably, without any gear, this build is still excellent. Now I do want to talk a little bit about the Ascendancy because there have been some changes. Now I know a lot of people are worried because a lot of the Ascendancy changes have been mostly negative, however there really is only one negative change that's happened to the Saboteur, and it's very easy to overcome. Our Maniacs will change, and this is probably the biggest change of the Ascendancy. We lost 20% reduced meta reservation of skills that throw mines. Now a lot of people are going to freak out about this and say that it's the end of the world, however, I did a little bit of testing and it doesn't look like even without this node that it changes very much and if you do have issues with mana you can simply take a couple mana reservation nodes they're very close to our tree already and you will be more than fine now talking in general about actually the mine ability that we're using which is purifying flame this has a couple interesting interactions now purifying flame the reason that this is so strong is because it creates consecrated ground on every single area that it hits and consecrated ground has some pretty beneficial effects for us it causes us to regenerate an additional six percent of our maximum life as well as hits against enemies standing on the consecrated ground have a 100% increased critical strike chance. So with Purifying Flame giving us auto-consecrated ground all over the area, I mean it literally goes everywhere, we are pretty much consistently getting an additional 6% regeneration and have a 100% increased critical strike chance. The so Purifying Flame has another interesting interaction. This ability actually has two separate damage portions. The first portion is the hit itself, which hits a little bit harder than the other portion. This is just like you would expect it to be. It goes out, it hits the enemy, it does some damage. However, there is a second shockwave effect that ripples all the way out through any enemies standing on consecrated ground that were not initially hit. So this ability actually cannot double dip, however it will give you a giant AoE shockwave for each of these mines, meaning that most enemies will be hit by every single one of the mines, giving it excellent clear. This ability also is a physical damage conversion spell, meaning that we are converting 50% from physical damage to fire, meaning we can make great use of things like Herald of Ash. So adding together the excellent scaling that mines in general have, this build is able to clear absolutely everything in the game with ease. This build can function perfectly fine on a 5-link Tremorod, which shouldn't cost you too much after a few days. 
This build doesn't require any specialty flasks, any specialty jewels, any specialty uniques besides the tremor rod. And with that extremely budget gear, you can do absolutely everything. So now that I've given you a preview of the build, let's jump into the game and take a little bit of a closer look. Hey guys, Big Ducks here, and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're enjoying my content, make sure that you like this video so that you can see more of it. Also, over 75% of you are still not subscribed to the YouTube channel. If you want to make sure that you see the latest up-to-date League Start content, make sure that you subscribe so that you can get all of these videos right in your feed. Now, I do want to remind you that there is going to be a playlist up in the top right corner now that has all of my League Start content for 3.13. So if the preview of this build didn't do it for you, check out that playlist and you can maybe find something that's a little bit more suitable for what you're looking to do. Now, without further ado, let's get back to the guide. Alright boys, if you made it this far into the video, that means you're looking for a little bit more knowledge. So let's begin with the leveling. Now, initially, I want to talk about some skill gems. There's not really a lot of skill gems to talk about on this build because we really don't use a lot of different skills. Early on, we're going to be getting Stormblast Mine. This is just a standard mine ability. I've talked about this a couple times before. It is just a very, very solid mine. Stormblast Mine has very good AoE, and it also has very good single target due to it giving a stacking 3% increased damage taken buff to it. So these mines are excellent for clear, excellent for single target. I suggest that you use them all the way up until you're able to actually actually transition to purifying flame mines. You can actually use Stormblast Mine for even longer than that if you want to. I think that most of the time it's fine to swap over at around 8. So you do have an alternate way to level up if you'd like to. You can just self-cast Purifying Flame. However, there is a problem with that. I personally go out through these Mine Damage nodes. You could path through Elemental Damage if you wanted to. That would make it so that Purifying Flame would be okay. However, the issue is going to come from that Purifying Flame is a conversion spell. So you're only going to get 50% of it converted to Fire Damage. I suggest that you level with Stormblast Mine all the way up until 8 and then swap over because then these mine nodes will be much more useful. These nodes are actually pretty good later on once you've fully converted over to Avatar Fire. However, in the meantime, Stormblast Mine is perfectly fine. And when you do hit level 8, you're going to get access to Blast Chain Mine. Now, Blast Chain is actually pretty important for you to learn, so I think that initially you should spend some time figuring out how this ability works. So there is one important line on this that is the only thing that you really need to know about how to scale damage on this build. It is the last line that says supported skills deal 5% more damage for each prior mine in detonation sequence. So what that means is that when you place down a bunch of mines and you hit detonate, whether it's on left click or whether you use on D or anything else, you'll see that these mines all detonate back to back, right? And you'll see that they detonate again. Each mine in the sequence, so if we throw five mines down, each mine is going to be gaining 5% more damage. So the first mine will have none, the second mine will have 5% more, and then 10% more, and then 15, 20, 25, so on and so forth. So it's very important that you learn how to actually make those cascades of mines work quite well. Now, I know I advocate for using left click detonate, however, left click detonate does cause one problem with the mine sequences. Each time that you click detonate mines, it resets your sequence of mines. So the idea is, is that when you place these down, if you are left clicking and holding left click, you are resetting your detonations constantly and you're not gaining that sacking buff. So there are ways that you can get around this. You can just use movement abilities in the meantime. So if you're tossing down a whole bunch of mines on a boss and you need to move, you can use movement abilities to keep the chains going, or you can simply not use left click detonate, although I really do like left click detonate. So the goal is that you want to get enough throw speed that you are able to actually continuously throw mines down. So we would toss a bunch of mines on the ground here, right? And then what we would want to do is we would want to start this detonation chain and then continue to throw mines and hope that the chain continues right? This is a little bit easier. There you go. You can kind of see how the detonation chain keeps going. Yeah. It's a little bit easier with more throwing speed, which we do get from charged mines. Um, charged mines is something that increases your mine throwing speed per frenzy charge. That's why we stack so many frenzy charges on this build. It's because we want that mine throwing speed. And we don't get that unless we're actually hitting enemies. You'll see more of that later. Beyond that, we do grab Skitterbots. Skitterbots is huge. Do not overlook this aura. This aura at level 20 is giving you 18% more damage through shock. It's giving you 18% chill effect through chill. And it is giving you a ton of damage because Skitterbots are able to detonate your mines. And then mines that are detonated by Skitterbots are able to rearm and be detonated again. That means when we combine that with Tremor Rod, we're able to get up to three mine detonations per mine. It's not always three, but it is up to three. It's a ton of detonations and it is not something that you should overlook. I do want to let you know, uh, some people have asked about other gems that I use in the build. I don't want to go over each and every specific gem in the video. So in the path of building down below that you can find in the description, there is a full list of all of the gems that we're using, including leveling gems, leveling links, all kinds of good stuff in there. So make sure that you check out the path of building if you're interested in more of the abilities. 
Then the next thing that I want to talk about is a very, very important recipe for mind builds, especially very early on. That is going to be the wand recipe. I've talked about this quite a few times before, but when you go to a vendor and you take any blue wand plus any kind of resist ring, it has to be either a ruby, topaz, or sapphire, and an orb of alteration, you're going to get access to a added damage to spells wand. Now keep in mind that the quality of the actual resist ring does matter for how much damage it's going to give you. A white ring is going to give you a tier eight mod, a yellow ring is going to give you all the way up to a tier six mod and so on and so forth. Now keep in mind there are level differences between these. It goes 12, 14, 20, I think for white, blue, yellow. So you're going to want to be upgrading those when you can in the first like 20 or so odd levels are like that get two of these I suggest lightning ones early on and maybe you can transition to fire after you've swapped over to purifying flames these wands are excellent for leveling early on they can carry you all the way to tremor rod no problem whatsoever because we have so much effectiveness of added damage when it comes to using mines and because we cast so many times it is a ton of damage while leveling don't skip out on these i suggest that you get two of them and then once you do have those two wands there's another thing that you can do to help with your character and that's going to be crafting resistances when you're leveling up the main thing that you need to know about leveling is that as you go through the game as you hit act five and complete act five and then complete act ten your resistances are going to get huge penalties. And some people may not know this, but resistances are very, very important in this game. You should have 75% maximum resistances at all times on fire, cold, and lightning. It is also suggested that for the average player, you should look to get at least zero chaos resistance. I know you see negative 48 here, but do as I say, not as I do. You do want to make sure that you keep up to date with these. The difference between having like 60 of a resistance and having 75% of a resistance is a ton of damage taken. It's way more than you think it is. Keep those resistances capped and you'll be very, very happy. And the way that you do this while leveling is you actually will get access to a bunch of cheap early crafts very, very early on. In act two, you're going to save a woman named Helena in one of the quests. She's gonna give you access to a hideout and she's gonna have you access to this bench. In this bench, you're going to be able to unlock crafts as you progress through the game. You'll find these little pedestals that'll unlock the crafts for you. And you're going to get these resist crafts. Use these on your gear. Those wands that I told you how to craft before, you can craft an extra resist on each of those wands because they have an open suffix. So any piece of gear that is not unique and not a flask can have resistances crafted on it. Craft this and make sure that you stay up to date with your resists at all times. It will make your leveling experience significantly easier. So the goal while you're leveling is max out your resists, make sure you have enough damage to feel comfortable, and then just stack effective health pool. That means life or energy shield, whichever one you're going for. So I do want to talk a little bit about the skill tree now. Um, to do that, we're going to jump over into Path of Building. I suggest that if you don't know what Path of Building is, you go into the description, grab Path of Building. It is a free tool. It's made by one of the guys who worked for GGG. There is a community fork version that's in my description right now that I suggest that you get. It is way more up to date, way more relevant than the previous version that was made by the GGG employee. I do heavily suggest that you get it because I have spent a ton of time in making these path of building notes and the build and everything as extensive as I possibly can. This is basically going to be like your handbook that you're using while you're leveling up and when you're playing this character. So let's jump over. So now that we're over here in path of building, um, I do want to talk about the skill tree a little bit. There are leveling trees meant for this. So down here in the bottom left, you're going to see this little section here would have let you jump to a leveling tree. The idea here is that these are going to be the points that you put in first. And as you progress, you'll be able to move through the other trees. So as we leave, we're gonna be doing damage, mine damage, we're gonna grab some damage here, some life, some crit and mine damage, as well as the saboteur, which allows us to have more remote mines, meaning we can get more chains. Gonna be heading up. Mine throwing speed is huge. You should get as much mine throwing speed as you can at any given time. It makes mines feel so much better. Grab some life and then the big mine wheel. This has a bunch of really good nodes. This clever construction is very, very important because early on, for any build that uses traps or mines, if you have a enemy that is using AOE abilities, they're gonna be destroying your mines and traps constantly. The first time that you'll probably notice this is when you get to Oak in Act 2. He's gonna be using a sweep ability and it's just gonna be clearing up and sweeping out your mines constantly. This clever construction node will stop that from happening. We also get a bunch of crit as well as just some damage penetration and mine duration. So these nodes are excellent. I suggest that you get them early. But then you can see also that we do have the bomb specialist node that we're gonna be grabbing first. So you're ascendancy points that you're going to be taking are actually listed in here as well. You'll see that when we jump to the second tree, you'll see we'll be getting Pyromaniac second. 
this did get nerfed, so keep in mind I will be updating these as we get Path of Building updates and such, as the patch notes and such come out. But you'll see here that we come down, we grab some more life, we grab all of this dodge, as well as filling in some crit nodes. This ability can actually scale with crit very early because of the Consecrated Ground effect. I suggest that you scale crit as soon as you possibly can. It actually is a ton of damage. We get a bunch of crit from successive detonations, as well as Doomcast and Blast Cascade. When you couple that with Charge Mind Support, you're going to have probably like like a lot of crit early on, like 40, 50, 60% crit very early in the game. And then when you continue going, you'll get more ascendancy points and you'll see more points to put in as you move around. So make sure that you follow these leveling trees. It'll have a ton of information for you. It'll tell you where to put your points in as you level up and you can go back and reference as you're playing the game. Now let's get back into the game and talk about a few more things. Now you remember that I said that bossing and such is going to be very important in this league. And I think that you need to know a little bit about gearing your character when you do hit the end game. So this character is relatively easy to gear. It doesn't require any super expensive uniques. The actual staff tremor rod is pretty sought after in the first couple of days because mind builds are very powerful early on. But keep in mind that this is a very common unique. This drops a lot. So if you can't get this on day one, don't feel too bad. The build will still work fine with like mines and just like a random chest piece because it's unrealistic that you're going to be getting like tremor rod and combs hard on day one unless you are like a top tier player. And if you are, you probably already know what you're doing. So you don't need this video. So the goal is, is that you want to get one of these tremor rods as soon as you can. It doesn't matter what sockets and links are on it. You just want to make sure that it is eye level 50. So you can hold alt on the item and you'll see it says item level 79 there. You want it to be item level 50 so that you can six socket it. That's all that matters about it. The rolls are pretty irrelevant. Obviously sp more spell damage is better, but 40 to 60 spell damage is not going to break the bank. Just get anything that you can. Once you get this, you should try to five link it. You can use the five link prophecy early on if you just want a very easy way to five link it. A five link tremor rod will carry you through the entirety of the game. You can make sure to check the path of building and the skills, all of the skills are in order of importance. So you can swap to whichever links that you do have available. Just make sure that you follow the information in there. Combs heart is good. It's not needed. You can use literally any chest piece if you want some more resistances. This just gives us a ton of life and fire damage. The machina mitts are a little bit hard to get early on. These are not easy to come by. They are a good thing to invest in. However, I would get tremor rod first and then think about these two items. The rest of this is just random stuff. It really doesn't matter. They're just random rares. You really do want to try to get mine throwing speed on some jewels if you can. More mine throwing speed makes this build significantly better. But other than that, it really doesn't need anything special. There's no cluster jewels that you really need to worry about. You can get some of them if you like, but they're not super important. Very early on, if you can't get the tremor rod or for some reason it's insanely expensive, you can always get like a corrupted six link chest piece or something like that. Just look for something that you can use. All right, boys, so we're gonna do a map. I can show off the build a little bit. We're going to do a tier 16, Awakener 8, Arachnid Tomb. Uh, we're also gonna be doing a bunch of Scarabs on it. We've got a Breach Scarab, a Piranha Scarab, a Torment Scarab, an Elder Scarab. On top of that, you can see that Arachnid Tomb is right here. We are going to be doing players take fizz damage, lightning damage, cold damage, and increase monster pack size, all four sextants. And we're gonna be running Delirium on this. So I really wanna show that I know a lot of people question the viability of this build. Well, we're probably gonna die here. I'm calling it now. You can kind of see the damage is quite good, even in Delirium map. Um, we're kind of already running in. Okay, so we got rid of those. But you can see the damage in the clear is excellent already. We're not really having any problems with clearing. I am just preparing myself for the one shot moment. I know it's coming. Like I'm already, I'm already, oh no. And we're also going to get redeemer on here. Okay, good. So um, chances of survival are, are quickly diminishing. However, you can kind of see the power of the build here, right? We're able to clear this mostly fine. The enemies are dying very quickly, not having too many problems until I inevitably, okay, there's some big damage spikes, but you can, you can uh, kind of see what I'm talking about here, right? Excellent clear, even in a delirium map. Tier 16, bunch of extra mobs in it. We're we're doing pretty well for the circumstances, I feel, for the amount of gear that I have. Remember, 5,000 life here. Not only does this build do pretty excellent clear, it's got a lot of recovery. You can see that my health is jumping back up constantly as we move around, but the boss damage is actually okay. Now we are on a delirium map, like a delirium mirror. So the boss is going to have, oh, that was really close. The boss is going to have uh, quite a bit more health if we still do have this mirror up by the time that we get in there. So we'll see if we can make it there. Standard playstyle is you just drop mines down, you run around, 
you let left click detonate do all the work for you. You can hit Enduring Cry if you need a little bit of extra healing or you want some endurance charges. It will help with some physical damage because we are taking a lot of physical damage right now because of the sextant and I'm getting stuck on walls because of this intensity and we finally died. I'll cut back to here so we can actually see the boss in a moment. All right, so now that we're right back around where we were and we no longer have the Delirium Mirror, we're still in a little bit of danger because of how many crazy mods are on this map. However, it should be a little bit easier since the non-Delirium mobs aren't as scary. So we're gonna get to the boss here. I'm pretty sure it's right here in this arena. And we'll take a look at what kind of, oh, that is a lot of enemies in this room, hello. Now that we've cleared that out, let's try to do some single target. You have to get the chains going. So the idea is that the more chains that you get going, we'll, oh, we'll pop some going here. Oh yeah, this boss is slow us down quite a bit. But even without being able to get these chains going, you can see the boss died pretty quickly. I didn't actually get to do the like big chain that I was talking about where you pop down a bunch of mines like this and then you start detonating them and then you just keep the detonate chain going like this. I didn't even get to do that and he still died really quick. So as you can see, an absolute ridiculous set of mods that were on this. We've got avoid ailments, extra projectiles, deal 135% extra damage as lightning, all of the additional mods, like we take more lightning damage, take more cold, take more physical. Um, as I said, Awakener 8, a very, very dense map. We even had Redeemer mobs on here. So as I said, very powerful build with very little gear. I mean, this stuff really isn't that insane. It's just stuff that I've pulled from other characters. I've used most of these items on like every single one of my characters that you've seen. I kind of share gear between all of them, so I think that the performance speaks for itself. So I hope that you give this one a try. My mind has been changed quite a bit about mines. They're very solid. I know that they've always been good, but the the addition of left click detonate has really kind of changed the game for me when it comes to mines. Much more fun to play than they were before. Bossing can be a little bit annoying because of trying to get the, the detonate chains going, but once you get it down and once you actually practice it a little bit, insanely good. And remember, if you don't do all of this crazy like tier 16 super buffed content, this build is even stronger than what you saw. Those enemies had a ton of defenses on them. It was Delirium monsters with all the sections, all the buffs, all the stuff on them, Awakener 8. So this build is going to be able to take you through all of the content super comfortably, and I hope that you give it a try. And that is going to be the end of the guide. Now, if you have further questions about this or any of my other builds, make sure that you join my Discord. The link is in the description down below. There is a PoE question section that has a ton of helpful people that would be happy to help you with all of your questions. Keep in mind during League Start, it may be quite busy. So if you do have answers to other questions, make sure that you help out other people as well. Also, if you want to catch me theory crafting some of these builds live, make sure to follow me over twitch.tv slash big ducks. I'm going to be live every day all the way up till the release of the 3.13 League, and then we will be pushing pretty hard right upon League Start. So make sure that you come and hang out with your boy. So that's going to be it guys thank you for watching the video i hope that you have a wonderful league start and remember if you enjoy my content make sure to like this video subscribe to the youtube channel for more content similar to this and stay safe out there in ray class and i'll see you guys in 3.13 echoes of the atlas